Hello there my beautiful friends, today we are going to have a good old fashioned swatch party with a brand new palette that I just got in my collection that I am so freaking excited to show you guys. This palette is from a brand called Nomad Cosmetics and this is their brand new Tokyo Harajuku palette. So if you are interested in seeing this swatch party, being a part of this swatch party, then go ahead and keep on watching and let's jump right on in. Alright folks, but if any of you are new around these parts, if anyone is new to my swatch parties here, then basically what we're going to be doing is obviously swatching this palette. We are going to be doing finger swatches, brush swatches, we are going to be showing the pans up close and personal, we are going to be showing the palette up close and personal, and the packaging as well. And since swatch party videos are a reoccurring theme here on my channel, I've been trying to follow them up with some tutorials as well, so you can expect one of those in the very near future with this palette. But let's go ahead and get right on in to some nitty gritty details about Nomad Cosmetics and what they have to say about this palette. You get 15 different shades in this palette and it does say that these were designed on location in Tokyo, Japan, which is pretty cool. Now obviously, if you can't tell, this is very clearly inspired by Japanese kind of kawaii, cute, anime-ish culture. And as someone who used to be obsessed with things like this and honestly still is obsessed with cutesy things like this, Sanrio and whatnot, this palette drew me in the second that I laid eyes on it on Instagram because of the cat-shaped design that has been pressed into the eyeshadow pans. Is that shallow of me? Probably, but I needed to have it for the packaging, for the color scheme, of course, and for the cats that have been pressed into the eyeshadow pan. Need I say more? Obviously, it's adorable. So reading straight from Nomad's website here, they state that this palette has 15 colorful kawaii shades from pastel lavender, mint and yellow to goth-like gray, and crystal chrome fruit hues of grape, lemon, and lime. New and unique multi-chrome toppers that shift in color and finish depending on the reflection of the light, creating a one-of-a-kind effect. Now this palette does contain five mattes, five satins, and five multi-chromes. These eyeshadows are also formulated with camellia oil to make them soft and silky and smooth on the skin. According to Nomad, this palette is PETA certified, cruelty-free, and vegan. It is also free of parabens, phthalates, and mineral oils, and no talc and no gluten are present in this palette. It's just about every checkbox out there. So now that you have a little bit of background information on the palette and on the brand itself, let's go ahead and jump right on into the most exciting part of the video, which of course is the swatches. This is what the outside packaging of the Tokyo Harajuku palette looks like. And honestly, I was sold the second I saw this packaging. It is so stinking and adorable. I cannot stand it. It reminds me of Hello Kitty. It reminds me of Sanrio. And I'm all about that life. But as you can see, this is the inside of the palette. We have some really beautiful pastels. Obviously, I love that gorgeous pastel lilac-y lavender and that bubblegummy pink. But I also really like the really light pastel Meyer lemon and the grapey purple shade and that orange and even the mint. I think that all of the colors in here are super beautiful. There really aren't that many pastel palettes on the market that aren't limited edition. I own the Creepy Cute palette, which is from Strobe Cosmetics, and I have always wanted more color in that palette. So the Nomad palette really just brings the color to the table here and it gives me the color that I was missing from the Creepy Cute palette. Plus I think this is the first time that I've seen an actual palette with matte shades in it being mixed with multi-chromatic pressed shades as well and I am 1000% on board for that. Let's see more of that people. Now we're going to get into the finger swatches. Now I'm just going to go ahead and swatch the entire top row on my finger and just do one swipe across my arm. I don't have any primer on, any lotion, it's just dry ass bare skin here and you're gonna see how these perform when being swatched upon the skin now as you can see as I'm swatching them across the skin these have a pretty strong concentration of pigment but you really have to kind of run your finger over them a few times to spread the pigment out if that makes sense they're not chalky they're definitely smooth they're not super buttery either but they're not chalky or chunky or weird by any means they're just not super super creamy which is totally fine this is the kind of formula that really does kind of bunch up when you first swatch it out i did think it was a little bit weird how when i swatched these all of the pigment seemed to stay right where my fingerprint went down onto my skin when the skin made contact and then when i would spread it out it didn't really follow through, but once I just kind of spread it out a few times, it definitely, you know, became even and spread out nicely and evenly on my arm. So I don't really see that as being an issue, but I have not really tried these on the eyes yet. So I will most definitely touch back on that factor once I do a tutorial. But as of right now, I thought it was just something that was kind of weird to note, but they're definitely pigmented and they're definitely not chalky from what I can tell as of right now. 
at least. So now we're going to be finger swatching the second row here, and these are described as satin shades, these particular five here. Now, they are extremely subtle for satin eyeshadows, which I am A-OK -okay with, but these are like matte shadows with a teeny tiny bit of pearl shimmer kind of sheen running through it. I wouldn't even call it shimmer, it's just a sheen. And I'm okay with that because you can blend these out and they basically become mattes. I'm not the biggest fan of satins anyway, so I would much rather use these as matte shadows. But if you're into satins, be warned, these are very, very subtle. So now let's go ahead and finger swatch the absolutely beautiful, like breathtakingly beautiful multi-chromes that are in this palette. I love the variation of colors that they chose for the multi-chromes. You have so many different fun looks you can do with this palette and you guys are gonna be kind of shocked here by what I'm about to say, but I think my favorite out of the five here is the shade Zaku Zaku, which is a kind of lemony yellow shade that has a bright pink shine and sparkle running throughout it. It is the second swatch furthest from the right there. It is freaking gorgeous, although all of them are, but honestly, I think my favorite one is that lemon yellow with a pink shift, which is very obscure for me, because y'all know I am a pink and purple kind of girl. It is an ultra shiny, super unique color, and I am really excited to use it on the eyes. So now let's jump on in to some brush swatches. So I'm just taking kind of a fatter packer brush, if you will. And I'm picking up the shade Kawaii, which means cute in Japanese, I believe, I'm pretty sure. But this is described as a matte ripe cantaloupe, and I think they couldn't have described it any better. It is like that peachy, neon, pastel, orange, peachy shade that cantaloupe really is. It's oddly specific, but if you've seen cantaloupe, if you've eaten cantaloupe, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a mixture between peach and neon orange, but it's also pastel. It's very strange. And as you can see here, I am wiping my brush off in between each swatch. So I don't want to hear it in the comments. But now I'm picking up the shade Take Noko Zuku, which like... I am not going to get these pronunciations right, okay? I do not know Japanese. I'm going to do the best that I absolutely can. I can promise you that. And for a pastel purple, this shade really applied on the skin nicely. Didn't really grab onto any areas or didn't really seem patchy. I'm excited to use it on the eyes. And that shade is described as a matte vivid violet. Next up, we're picking up a little bit of Mel Tea Room, which is a matte buttercup yellow. And honestly, this is one of my favorite shades in the palette as well. I think that kind of creamy lemony yellow that kind of looks like custard is so beautiful and it applied gorgeously to the skin. Now we're picking up a little bit of that beautiful mint and this is the shade Khaki Gori, which is described as a matte matcha mint. This applied really beautifully and evenly as well. I mean, you guys are seeing this in real time here. These are applying really smoothly for being so pastel. I'm swatching the last shade in the top row, this is the shade Visual Key, which is described as a matte charcoal gray. This is probably a shade that I'm never really gonna touch, but as you can see, it applies smoothly to the skin. It applies nicely and pigmented. All of these were a little bit sheer, but I was able to build them up upon one extra application. They were basically full pigmentation after just another application application of the product. Jumping down to the second row, we have our very first satin shade in the bunch here, and this is called Lolita. We all know that name, <laughs> but this is described as a satin pink sherbet. This is an absolutely beautiful kind of dream sickly orange pink mixture. It was a little bit more sheer, but I mean, it's a satin shade. Most satin shades aren't the most pigmented things in the world, and I found that to be true with this guy, but the color is absolutely stunning. The next satin in this row is called Now is Forever, and this is described as a satin satin sea green. I think that I'm just going to have to try these satins on the eyes and see how they perform because they don't swatch amazingly, but I know that most satins don't really swatch that great. Next up is Hanami, which is described as a satin tea rose pink. I think the undertone and the actual tone of the shadow just in general is stunning. It's basically an extremely muted, creamy, baby pink with a little bit of beige kind of thrown in. It is absolutely gorgeous. The next shade in the bunch here is obviously one of my favorites for obvious reasons. And this is Gyaru, and this is described as a satin orchid bloom. This shadow is absolutely beautiful. I love the orchid pinky purpley undertone. We all know I love this shade. It is stunning. I cannot freaking wait to use it. And the last shade in the second row here is called Kuroi Niji, and this is described as a satin gray violet. I found this to be a bit more taupey than violet-y. It's an interesting color. It does remind me of white charcoal, so it's not really something that I would use, but I could definitely see how people would want this in a palette. Just not really me, because I don't really reach for stuff like this, but that's okay. All right, guys, so this is the most exciting part of the palette, in my opinion. 
like these shadows are freaking beautiful to look at and look at the adorable little cat pans i i can't deal with how cute this palette is these multi-chromes just look so multi-dimensional and sparkly and shiny and glittery but not chunky glittery glittery in a good way in the pans I was honestly so, so surprised when I got it in the mail. I was in awe over how beautiful these are. And let me tell you, the swatches are absolutely stunning as well. But right now I'm just showing you guys what they look like in the pan. I'm showing off the different shifts that these have when you turn the pan certain ways. But the first shade out of the multi-chromes is called Decora, and this is described as a festive fuchsia with candy-colored crystals. So basically, it's like a warm purple with some pink and some blue kind of sparkles running throughout it. Not really sparkles, like really, really fine glittery micas, if you will. Sparks, however you want to say it. I think that this shadow is absolutely to die for. It reminds me of fairies, it reminds me of unicorns. It is absolutely stunning. So now we have probably my favorite shade in the entire palette, and I'm very, very surprised by it, and that is Zaku Zaku. Now this is described as a lustrous lemon with lychee pink crystals. I don't know if you guys have ever had lychee before, but it is delicious, totally off topic, but I love lychee. As you can see, in certain lighting, this definitely looks like a pink kind of crystally shadow, and then you see that lemon yellow peeking through. It's definitely a sheer shadow, but it was meant to be that way. These are meant to be toppers. I'm gonna have to try layering these up with other eyeshadows because I know this one is going to be absolutely stunning. This one reminds me of like pink lemonade. Next up, we have Takeshita Dori. Don't know if I said that right. I did my absolute best. This is described as a sparkling grape with radiant orchid crystals. So basically, it's like a grapey kind of deep purpley shade that has light purple and pink sparkles running throughout it. It is my kind of eyeshadow. I have plenty of eyeshadows like this, but this one in particular is really beautiful because it looks kind of indigo-y in the pan, and then once you get it on the skin, you can see the pink undertones really shining through. I love it. I cannot wait to use it. This is my kind of eyeshadow right here. Second to last, we have the shade Moshi Moshi, which is a cute name for an eyeshadow. This is described as a prismatic lime punch with aqua crystals. I feel like this shadow had a little bit of gold in it too. I don't know why, but I'm sensing a bit of gold. It's another shade kind of like Zaku Zaku where it almost looks, I don't know, transparent or translucent on this skin but then you get it in certain lights and you just see such a strong pop of green and such a strong pop of sparkle. It's sheer, yet it still has that really strong sparkle. It reminds me of almost like a chandelier or something like that. It's like someone dipped their chandelier in lime jello. It sounds disgusting, but as you can see in those swatches there, I had to just give them their own moment because it is so freaking beautiful. The shadow is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It is stunning. And the final multi-chromatic shade is called Otaku, which I believe means anime fan. I might be totally wrong and just pulling it out of my ass right now, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Nonetheless, this is an iridescent pink sugar with ice blue crystals, and I thought this was going to be my favorite. I think everyone thought this was going to be my favorite, and it's definitely up there. Like, it's probably number two or number three, don't get me wrong. It is absolutely stunning. I mean, literally listen to how it's described. Iridescent pink sugar. I, I want to legally change my name to Iridescent Pink Sugar because I feel like that just describes me and my style and my interests so well. I'm just kidding, I would never actually do that. Nonetheless, it is an absolutely beautiful eyeshadow. Like I said, like the rest of them are here, they're a little bit more sheer and kind of almost translucent, almost transparent, but the sparkle and the shine and the shift from these is unlike anything I've ever seen before. I'm thoroughly impressed with how these look and I cannot wait to wear them. I keep saying that, but I truly cannot wait to wear these. These colors are absolutely stunning and I love that you have such a beautiful variation of shades to choose from out of the multi-chromes. These would also be absolutely stunning over top of any of the shadows that are in the palette as far as the mattes go. I think this would be beautiful over top of any metallic. This is the kind of shadow that you just throw all over your lid, walk out the door, you can't really see much of anything when you're leaving the house, then you get outside and you get in the sunlight and your eyes are just glistening to high heaven. It's like a glossy look with a little bit of an iridescent, colorful, pastel-y thing going on. I am in love with it. I think it's beautiful. I think the concept of these shadows is gorgeous. I just, I can't say enough good things about the actual colors themselves.
here are all of the mats swatched out. I built these up, I believe, two times for each shadow, except for that beautiful light purple kind of towards the right side of my arm. And I think I didn't have to build up the mint shade as well or the charcoal shade. The rest of them I just had to build up one time. For being such a light colored pastel palette that they chose here, I think these are actually pretty gosh darn pigmented. I've had quite a few pastel palettes and quite a few pastel shades in general be very, very, very sheer. And these are actually pretty darn pigmented. Now, I do think they're a little bit light, so I think if you have deeper skin, maybe they won't work that well. Maybe you can finesse them and kind of mix in other shades to get them to be a little bit deeper, but they are pretty, pretty light. So I would have liked to have seen maybe a few more deep colored pastels, maybe instead of the charcoal gray, because seen like a really deep pastel fuchsia. Does that exist? Did I just make that up? Probably. Or like a deeper aqua pastel. I would have loved to have seen that instead of that charcoal gray, but nonetheless, I understand why it's in there. It's a deepening shade, whatever, whatever. So if you have deep to a deep dark complexion, I think this palette might be a little bit light on you, might be a little bit washed out looking, but I do think that these are pretty pigmented from what I can tell. Because these shadows are more pigmented, I do think that they will show up on you. They might just be a little bit light, but honestly, I have seen plenty of gals and boys with super, super light pastel eye makeup that have deep dark and dark skin, and it looks absolutely freaking fantastic on them. It just makes the pastels pop to high heaven. They look absolutely beautiful. So just wanted to give that information and that opinion out to anyone who has deeper skin, who was looking into this palette, who wasn't quite sure how light it really is. It's definitely pretty light, but there are some deeper shades. And I think that these shadows really will show up on, you know, basically anyone's skin tone because they are so pigmented. So I hope that was helpful for you if you have been looking at this palette and you weren't quite sure about the actual lightness of the palette itself. But sadly, we have reached the end of this swatch party video. <sighs> I don't want it to end either. I know, I know. These swatches are just too darn beautiful, especially those multi-chromes. So I am most definitely going to be doing a tutorial, if not a few tutorials here very soon on my channel. I've been trying to give you guys not only in-depth swatches but also tutorials this way you have all the information you need about these palettes that are coming out and you can decide for yourself if it's a good fit for you or if it's not so if you are not already subscribed and you would like to be and you want to stay in the loop with when I post these tutorials then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and if you found this video entertaining helpful exciting if you liked watching the swatches then go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up it helps out the channel it helps out small youtubers so if you choose to do so then i greatly appreciate you but with that being said i hope that you are having an absolutely amazing and beautiful day wherever you are and thank you so much for joining me here today i hope to see you next time bye